vibroacoustic bath. The allure of sound underwater. Hey guys, welcome to West Oakland. Um, you're at the Hyphy Design Laboratory. We're an ecological engineering firm and we focus on living systems and how we integrate those into architecture. Everything from water conservation and reuse and treatment to green roofs and living walls. Essentially urban ecology. A bunch of people come and ask what does hyphy mean? And for us, it kind of came from two directions. We're based here in West Oakland, and there's the hyphy hip hop movement, spelled H Y P H Y. And it's this kind of amazing, playful, kind of very loving, loose hip hop movement here. And I wanted to embody that to some extent. And on a biological level, it is essentially the mycelium fungus that has a symbiotic relationship with plants and soil. Essentially, this mysterious organism that's still known very little by biologists that shares nutrients between the soil and the plants and the largest organism in the world is actually this huge mat of hyphae. It kind of is a double entendre to hit on both of those things. So the main way that we're looking at reinventing the bathroom is actually looking at the inputs and outputs of the bathroom, both on a water use and water reuse standpoint as well as on a, a nutrient level. So one of the things that amazes me is that we take potable water and put that into a toilet. You know, we're essentially taking mountain spring water that comes from our watershed, collect it, pipe it thousands of miles, and bring it down here. What we want to look at, rather, is really honing that in and creating more of a closed loop. So most of our sources of gray water are actually from the bathroom. They include the showers and lavatory sinks because they're much cleaner sources and they really only have a little bit of soap in them and some nutrients and organic matter. So what we're doing is designing filtration systems and reuse systems for this water to take water that's coming out of the sink, filter it and reuse it to flush toilets because why do we really need to be putting completely potable water down a toilet? We're also then taking the water that comes out of the showers and sinks and purifying it and treating it to be used on landscape irrigation because once again, the microbes and the plants in the landscape um, exist ecologically to treat and purify water. One of the kind of creative products that we've been um, dreaming up is essentially a whole gray water system that's contained in the bathroom where you would take the water that comes out of the sink and the shower, run it through a living wall feature, and then reuse that for flushing the toilet. So you'd have this completely contained um, treatment and reuse system in the bathroom. So there's a variety of different scales from low-tech systems that you can build for two to five hundred dollars DIY style up to five or six thousand, ten thousand dollar systems we're designing for clients that are completely computer controlled and they're looking at water use monitoring and have the ability to really understand um, kind of the flows of their, their water use. Although much of the world's population is using ad hoc gray water systems, uh, the modern movement of gray water and water reuse owes a lot to the grassroots and DIY movements that have been going on here in Northern California. Dating back to pretty much the early 90s when we had our last severe drought, people like Art Lugwood from Oasis and then the gray water gorillas um, based here in Oakland have been essentially teaching people how to take back their plumbing. So essentially if the permitting agents aren't going to allow you to permit a system and have plumbers do it, they're teaching people how to do it themselves. I'm trying to eliminate fools who choose to be Mr. Boo Boo on the So we're heading up to one of our current construction sites up at the top of the East Bay, quite different from our studio. Right now we're at one of the highest points in the East Bay. Uh, we're doing rainwater and gray water systems on this project integrated into some of the greenest bathrooms in the East Bay. Right below me is going to be a constructed wetland that has plants and gravel in it, which will be treating the water coming from the bathroom sinks, the showers, and the laundry room. Coming down downspouts over here, water is going to get conveyed from the roof into a large 2,500 gallon storage tank. That water is going to get then pumped back up to the bathrooms and used for flushing. So right here is where the toilet's going to be. Obviously that water is going to go to sewer, but this is actually our cold water line that's going to the toilet and that's coming from our rainwater catchment system. Over here we have 
our drain line for the sink. We're going to be a beautiful sink here. Um, this drain line is actually going to go down to the gray water system where it gets treated and used in the landscape. And here are the two cold water supplies, which are potable water and not gray water. So right now in the beginning of the 21st century, we're essentially looking at how to reshape our energy infrastructure to be more sustainable. And that's obviously the first challenge, but uh, as we're seeing now in California with the worst drought in 100 years, the next challenge, once we start to solve some of that, is going to be water solutions. How we close loops, how we take a single molecule of water that hits our site, and instead of using it once and sending it to a waste treatment plant, how we take that and use that same molecule two to three times. 50 years from now, we're going to have to look to using urine and feces and recycling these in a closed loop system to grow food if we want to sustain our population on this earth. Thank you.